Dan O'Connor of Hydrama Systems, and today we're doing some I-beams, and I'm going to show you exactly how I-beams are installed. Now, I have not done I-beams in six, seven, eight years, because most of the time I will dig on the outside, push the wall back into place, and put wall pins in there. All right, now let's take a walk outside. I'm going to show you why we can't dig on the outside. We have a mountain. We have all of these boulders. Once you start digging out, you hit a boulder, you're not going to move it. If I dug this out in a massive major rain, then this is going to all slide in and it could be a disaster. So on this job, I'm going with I-beams. Okay, so here we are. The uh, footer is way high and the, uh, the slab is only a, a, an inch above it. So it's going to be very hard to get an I-beam in there and hold it. And the slab for, the, for a concrete uh, garage floor is, uh, it's not that thick. So uh, I'm gonna go step by step, show you how this is done. And then you could ask yourself whether or not a carbon fiber strip could do the same thing as an ivy. Okay, first thing I wanna do is chip about three inches down off the footer. Now for you people who are gonna say, oh no, you're cutting into the footer. Well, this footer ain't going nowhere. And we put all the concrete back and when you see how it's finished, the yeah, I-beam becomes a part of the footer. Notice my foot guiding that. On uh, more than one occasion, it's jumped up and smashed my foot. See. On the concrete slab. I need to make it straight. The I beam is going to be flush against this block wall. So you want to make sure that the footer is out of the way so that you can push it all the way against the block wall. Out here, uh, you want to make the slab not all broken up like this. You want to trim it down or chip it down so that it's decently smooth and straight because you're going to, of what you're going to do in the future. You got to get the I beam. You want to flush to the top block. It, don't, it doesn't matter what angle it is, just get it flush to the top block. You want to make sure it's tight. So these would be liners. I got a six by six across here. I have my I-beam against the top block. I have my six by six holding that in and my two liners against the six by six glued and bolted. So the two liners on the side are never gonna move. The six by six is never gonna bend. Now we're gonna go do the bottom and I'll show you what happens. Okay, turn up this bitch in here. Yeah, level. I don't need to use the angle line on this because it's a little bit, the floor is a little thin. Okay, put that down like on the, on the stone against the concrete like this. Okay, terrific. Gotta be careful here because these, uh, you wanna have everything as square as possible, like this concrete, and this as straight as possible, so it doesn't flip out on you. See what I mean? Could have hit me right in the kazoonies. I wanna get the bottom snug against the bottom block, just like I got the top snug against the top block. The I beam is gonna have a bow in it, but it's gonna constantly maintain the pressure against the wall, the whole wall. And you know, some of these other idiots, they put the I beam in straight, and then they think they're gonna fill the top and the bottom gap with concrete, and that's ridiculous. Now, I know what you say that they're gonna put in I beams, but they really gotta put in the I beam properly, otherwise they ain't gonna do shit. All right, that's 20 tons, it ain't going nowhere. Snug up in here, all right, tight, and you're tight all the way up top. Yeah. I need a piece of uh, rebar. They cut metal, you really should have gloves on because it burns the hell out of your hands. All right, so the rebar is gonna go against the I-beam and the bottom of that angle line that I put in there and loosen that and voila. The rebar is number seven. This will never go anywhere. That will never go anywhere. That will never go anywhere. And uh, 
that's how you put in an I-beam. Now I've got an interior pressure relief system on the inside and you've always had water and mud on the outside of the house. That is what's pushing the wall in and causing the lateral pressure. So now if I've got a pressure relief system in here, I'm draining all the water from inside of the blocks. I'm draining all of the water and moisture from the outside of the wall, meaning that the mud is going to start to dry up because there's not going to be any water out there. When there's no more water out there, it's going to create little molecular, little molecule, whatever spaces in the dirt, and the dirt is going to have a little bit of room to be compressed. So now if I've got these I-beams always pressure, always putting pressure on the wall, and the outside dries up, the wall can bend itself back into place. And that's how you repair something, or that's how you fix something, and that's how you make something work long term. And you can try that with a carbon fiber strip if you like, but... um. We've got some more I-beams to do inside, and then I'm going to want to show you a few things, okay? Tricky camera work, huh? I'm getting better at this shit. <laughs> See how big that crack is? I think we've got, uh, we got about three-eighths of an inch right there. I'm going to put this duct tape on here flat. If we get the wall moving back, the tape is nice and smooth right now. And if the wall goes back into place, there'll be a little bulge in here, meaning the wall Let's move back a little bit. All right. If you want to do a carbon fiber strip on something like this, well, you can just go to the hardware store and, you know, there you go. Put your carbon fiber strip on there. There you go. I used to put a band-aid on there, but just because I've got duct tape, you know, I figured I'd fuck with those guys some more. All right. There you go. Okay, so yesterday we, we put the I-beams up. We got them pressured against the wall. And this is how much it's closed. Just overnight. And so it's going to continuously be pushed back basically because we've got all this pressure on the wall. I have noticed a lot of uh, companies put in their advertising foundation repair and it turns out to be nothing more than carbon fiber strips. Well, it's not foundation repair. It's foundation temporary band-aid. All right. This is a repair when you can't do the job from the outside. This is real. This is reality. The primary reason why companies use carbon fiber strips is because they don't have anybody with the kind of skills or knowledge to put up an I-beam the way it's supposed to be done. That's how you do I-beams. And um, you got I-beams as a choice. You've got outside where you open it up, push the wall back. That's a choice. Wall pins will just hold it in place. And a carbon fiber strip is like a piece of duct tape on the block.